Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of LFA's Job Shop. This week we're on the Toy Oasis again, and we have another list of things to do. So let's get into it. Alright, so today I have another list of small jobs to do, so I've got the list here, I'll read them to you and then we'll get into it, try and smash a bunch of stuff out. So we're going to test the intake air temp and the alternator, so I just need to get some more battery power to the toy waste and get it running. And then once it's running, if the light goes out, the alternator is good, and if it is continuing to run, then the intake air temp is fine. I need to install some O2 bungs in the exhaust, so that should be pretty simple. I've got the old exhaust here, I need to cut those up a bit. Salvage the thread, drill a new hole in the exhaust, and weld that guy in. Then I need to take the headers off and weld the flange for the actual exhaust onto the header. So I've only just tacked that at this point, and they need to come out, get fully welded, and then install the headers properly for the last time with the gasket, all the bolts, all that sort of stuff. So we'll need to jump into that shortly. Then last night I went to Aiden's place and he welded the new fan shroud, the newly adjusted fan shroud, to the front radiator so that can go in. Put the fan on, finish that wiring up, so that'll be really good. He also welded some bungs to the rear overflow uh, or rear header tank for me for the radiator, so I can install that in the back of the ute. I need to pull the tail shaft out and fix the adapter from the tail shaft to the diff. So I need to pull that out, clean it up, get the threads out, get some new bolts and all that sort of stuff. So we can start that today. Probably won't be able to finish it because I don't have bolts on hand. Then the steering column, so I need to replace a small section of double D shaft that I welded together because um, I didn't have the right length. So I've since got the right length, again, thanks to Aiden. Uh, so I need to cut that to length and put it in the ute and replace that welded one because welded steering stuff, not good. Don't do it unless it's temporary and you don't really care. Then on the steering shaft, I'd like to add another support bearing. Um, there's a section that's quite long and unsupported, so I'd like to put another bearing in there. Just make it nice and sturdy. Then the last jobs for this episode are an engine cover, so that goes underneath the seat and above the engine. Just puts a plate in between the two and hopefully saves your bum from catching on fire. So I need to make one of those. And then to do that, I need to move the wiring underneath and drill that hole and put a grommet in there for the actual wiring to pass through into the cap. So that's the plan for today. Let's get into it. First of all, I'm going to jump start this thing with the Camry and try and test that alternator light and the intake air temp. Alright, we got the Camry idling. Let's try and fire this thing up. Can't be fighting flat batteries anymore, surely. Key on. Ignition on. This is ridiculous. Alright, so first thing on the list is the intake air temp and the alternator. So I tried to jump it with the trusty Camry. No good. So there's something going on. There's either not a good enough connection in there or it's too long of a stretch. I know these jumper cables do kind of suck, so that probably doesn't help. Um, so I'm going to ignore that problem and go on to the next thing on the list, which is the O2 bungs and the wires. So I've got the O2 sensors here from the Commodore that this engine came out of. And I've got a piece of the exhaust with the O2 bung still in there, so I need to cut that out and then try and adapt it and weld it into the exhaust on the toy waste. So let's get cutting and hopefully it's not too much for pain. All right, so the O2 sensor is installed, wired up, everything's zip tied out of the way and then I have done the other side also. Then I jumped into the cabin and just tidied up a bit of this, a bit more conju and tidied up the wiring down to the O2 sensors. So that's all done now. I need to do the front half and then also this little bit here, but that's a later problem. So what we're gonna jump into now is getting an engine cover on here. Um, I'm not gonna be able to install it fully because of this guy, it needs to be drilled through here and a grommet, but I'm going to cut a piece of aluminium to the right size get it all in there and get it ready to go. So, you guessed it, school sign, because I have one. So that's gonna be the engine cover. It's not quite big enough, so I've got another piece over there. 
So I'm just gonna get into cutting that and make it fit. All right, a lot of cutting later. We've got the back section in. So this is not quite tall enough. So what I've done is had this other piece that I chucked in there. So that'll be screwed together and I'll just silicon all of this so it's nice and attached and also removable, um, but it's all sealed. So then I'll chuck some textures in here, same on the other side. So obviously that's alley and the truck is steel, so I can't weld them together. And I'd also like it to come out. So it'd be good if I can just run some silicon down the back. Then the front half is cut and ready to go in. And slips inside the shifter like that. And then it will line up with the side here. So it's sitting on that wiring obviously because that needs to come through this side piece. And then this will be probably nut inserted to the tunnel. Tunnel, I guess. And then I'll run a couple across the back as well to try and seal it all together. And then I'll probably get some foam or something and try and get it so it seals nicely so there's not a whole bunch of LS coming into the cab. Then I also need to weld the nuts on for the seat, so here and in here, so that we can just um, chuck those bolts in and not have to worry about getting to the back side. Because once this is in, it's going to be pretty awkward. So I need to do that. A few things to do here, and I also need to grommet, but I can't do any of that stuff today. So I'm just going to leave it here for now and move on to the next job. All right, so the next job for today is replacing this steering shaft. So this one's the one we ran out of uh, at length, so I had to cut and weld. So I'm going to undo these uni joints, get that piece out, and then cut another bit to length. Put that back in. And then I need to do a bearing here at a later date, but that won't be today. Alright, that piece of double D shaft is in the steering, so now I just need to do that support bearing. But I'm going to go back to the exhaust, I'm going to rip off the exhaust manifolds and weld up that flange. And that will be the exhaust fully finished, which is the first time I've finished anything fully on this thing for a long time. <laughs> so let's pull those out, weld them up, chuck them back on. All right, so head is off, re-welded, reinstalled. That was a bit of misery, but it's all bolted up now. So hopefully that's not gonna be a problem and they never have to come off again unless the engine's coming out. So on to the next job. All right, so it's a new day. I finally went to the wreckers and got a grommet. So this is off of the back of a headlight. It's all I could find that was the right kind of size. So I've got a piece of pipe here that I've cut to length. That is the right diameter that goes inside that bush nicely or that uh, grommet. So now what I need to do is cut a hole through here and weld that guy on. So what I'm going to do is use this dimple die cutter. So there's a sort of port of power type thing there. And then this is a cut and then that's the other side. So all it does is just put the material between those two. It pulls it, that thing pulls them shut and it puts a hole in it. So to start with you need to drill a small hole. So I normally drill a really tiny hole, get this guy through there. Then use a small cutter to make it this size and then use that to go through the lot. So I'll set up the camera and I'll show you how to use it. All right, so you're looking from a top down perspective here. So what I want to do first is drill a small hole in here, big enough to receive this bolt. So what I'm going to do is screw the porter power into this guy and then put this die either side of the metal with a nut on the top and then pump the porter power up and that will pull these two fittings together and cut a small little hole. All right, so we've got that all set up. So there's the nut, one half of the cutter, the other half of the cutter is in there. Then there's a small spacer because the um, diameters are wrong. And then we've got the port power. So if I just pump this up, it'll pull this guy in and cut through this small sheet steel. So I take the nut off, remove the 
cutter from the hole and then these two pieces here cut this little piece out here so now there's a nice clean hole in there it's not the right size for what I need but it does fit this bigger pin so I can go to the next size die So that's the bigger dimple die cut through. There's the piece of steel that we just removed. So there's the piece of steel we just removed. It does bend it a bit, but it makes a really nice clean cut. So now that that's all cut, we'll see if this piece of pipe fits in the hole. That is a very tight fit, but it will go. It just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. The tube, not the hole. The hole is actually really nice. So I'll just clean this up, get it in there, and then move all this wiring loom, then I can put the grommet on, tape it all up once and for all, and then this section is done, then we can actually put the lid on properly. Alright, so I've cleaned it all up, ripped the ECU out and put it over there. So now I'm just going to tack this onto the engine cover, I guess, and then I can feed all the wiring through it with the grommet on there, and button it all up. So I'm just going to throw some tacks on here, and then I'll get to rerouting all this wiring, and I'll show you when I'm all finished. All right, so that is the cabin side of the wiring finished for now. There's a bit more to tidy up in here, but that won't happen until I get into the actual body loom. So obviously I've only done the engine loom so far. So I've just finished it to here. I still need to make sure that everything in there is all good and rearrange some stuff. So I'm gonna move on to the engine lid, get that fastened down. So the back, I'm just gonna use some screws and then the front half, I'll use some nut certs. So this bit's removable, this bit ideally not, but still removable if you need to. So I'll get the drill out, drill a bunch of holes, put a bunch of nut certs in get this thing fastened nice and securely. All right, one million holes later, one million nuts outs later, and half a million screws later. Pretty good. So it's probably gonna rattle a little bit. Um, there is only half the screws in there. I don't have a bunch more shorties. So I'll get some of those later, but that's that done. Wiring is done in here anyway. So that's me done in the cabin for hopefully a little while. So I finally bit the bullet and bought a battery. So then I've also done the two cables up the top here, which go to the bulkheads. So I need to finish this up and tidy it up and wrap it and everything. But I just want to make sure this battery works. Um, I think my jumper leads are dead because this battery is brand new and still wouldn't jump start this thing. So I reckon all those other batteries are probably fine. And it's just the cables that are really badly damaged. I wonder why. So now with that brand new battery installed, we should be able to test this alternator light. So it comes on with the isolator. Fuel pump and everything comes on as per it should. And then we should be able to start it. So it's running, the alternator light has gone out. So that's wicked. Engine cover's on and done. So that needs to come off again anyway, but that's all done for now. So alternator wiring works, starter motor wiring works and it turns off, which is rather important. On to the next job. Actually, while I'm in here, I did label the alternator light and I did label the relays and also the fuse for the alternator. So not super big steps, but at least I know what's going on in there. All right, the next thing on the list is to get this tail shaft and the adapter out. I need to replace the bolts. I'll show you why in a minute, but I'll get it out first, get it on the bench. All right, so I got the tail shaft out. So I had a small adapter made up a while ago. It just gives me a little bit more length in the tail shaft and also the nut on the pinion of the diff sticks out too far so I needed a bit more of a gap here so the center of this is hollow to fit over that nut. So I use grub screws and a nut to hold these together um, from both sides, grub screws in and nuts on both sides. They started breaking uh, without even moving this thing, they started breaking and popping off. So I just snapped one off basically with my fingers and the last one I had to undo. So out of eight, seven broke without even driving this thing, without even moving. So I need to replace those. So I'm gonna try and get this thing apart and get all those grub screws out. And then if I can do that, I'll get some more bolts and try it with bolts instead of the grub screws because they obviously don't work. All right, so I've got the grub screws out and you can see seven out of the eight broke and they are 
starting to rust and they're all really gross. So these were never gonna work. Unfortunately, there's one that did not break, <laughs> which is crazy. So I got those out and then I have cleaned up and painted the little spacer ring, um, try and stop it from rusting again. And then when I get some more bolts, I can put it back in the car and bolt it all up again and hopefully not have another issue with this tail shaft. All right, so that's the tail shaft bolted back in. I think we've got three jobs left on the list. All right, so the next job is to mount this guy up again now that it's welded and the fan's on and the wiring's done. I also need to plumb it up, but that can be a job for later. And there's a little bit of wiring under there that I need to wrap in tape and just make it a little bit nicer. But I'll spare you those details. Let's just mount this up. All right, that's the front radiator and front fan mounted up for good. So I need to install the pipes to go to the actual engine. Um, that'll have to happen in a later episode because I need to move the air filter. So I did say I had two more jobs left, but I will just be doing one. So what I want to do is mount this header tank here under one of these panels. So I need to pull this board off, install that, drill a hole in the board, and then put the board back on. So I'll do that and then that'll be the end of the episode. So there was another job which was the support bearing for the steering box. Um, that's going to take a fair while and I need to do a fair bit of thinking and building for that. So I'll have to put that in a later episode. So let's get into installing this rear header tank. So I stuffed that up in two ways. Uh, this hole is a little bit too far back, so it needs to be probably five or 10 mil further forwards, which is a bit annoying. And the second thing was when I took that screw out, this board cracked. So I needed to get in a whole new board and put it all on again, start from scratch. So that's a bit annoying, but I'll have to do that later today. So that's the idea anyway. Um, and then ideally this will be centered to the board and then you can get your fingers in here and undo the lid. So I'll get another board later today and I'll catch you up then. All right, so before I move on to buying some new wood, I figured I would use this as a template and try and work out the spacing here. So flipped it over, cut a little bit off the other end, and now that fits in there nicely. Reasonably centered, can wiggle it a little bit obviously, and then still the same length at that end. So now when I get a new board, I can just put this one on the end of the new length, line it all up, put the whole saw straight through there and then screw it down. So I'll go grab a board and then I'll do that. All right, I got a new piece of wood. I've got a template. Let's try this again and hopefully not stuff it up. All right, and the new board is in. So it's obviously a different color. I got the lightest one I could find because they're all covered in the treating stuff. Um, this will age and look like the other ones eventually. Hopefully not too long. So that's all screwed down. We've got a nice hole for the cap. It's reasonably centered and it's all screwed down. It is a little tiny bit higher than there, which annoys me and I know it's going to annoy Aiden. Um, but I did measure everything and then screwed it down and it's just a tiny bit proud. So I might remove that at a later date, but it is under the tray, so it's super awkward. All right, that's it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will be back with the Toy Waste next week. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next week.